So the next speaker is Teresa Perez from University of Granada, Granada, Spain. Multivariate mixed orthogonal function satisfying three term relations. Uh, please, Teresa. I thank uh, the organizers to invite me to, to participate in this meeting. I wish I was there in Sochi with uh, you, but this is uh, today. Okay, I will speak uh, uh, now. I will speak about uh, multivariate mixed orthogonal functions satisfying three term relations. Okay, I will uh, talk about our motivation to work because this is a work, uh, um, uh, uh, work. Uh, made with uh, Cleonice Bracciali from the University of São uh, Estadual Paulista in Sao Paulo in Brazil. And uh, I will speak about our motivation, what uh, we understand about functional systems, mixed, mixed orthogonality, our three term relations, and uh, of our three theory. Excuse me, Teresa. Si? Yes. I don't hear you. Excuse me? Louder, please. Uh, I, I, I can. Sorry. Your microphone is very ah, quiet. Okay. It's okay now? <coughs> it's okay. Can, can you hear me? Oh, I am uh, too quiet. Oh, I don't know how to, because this is at the highest level. Oh. Uh. Highest level. Oh. Online. Oh, okay. Thank you. But uh, I, I don't know how to, to solve this. Oh. It's terrible. But, uh, Maybe, uh, maybe you have it's to, to uh, uh, okay. Oh, sorry, but uh, I don't know because this is my highest level. It's okay now. Uh, it's okay now. Okay. Yes, yes. Thank you. Okay. This is, uh, I mean, sharing my screen. I, I, okay. Oh, okay. I'm sharing. Oh, this is my share. Is this okay now? Yes. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, this is a joint work with Cleonis Bracciali from the Brazil. And uh, this work has, has been recently accepted in computation and applied mathematics. I will talk about our motivation. What about functional system, mixed orthogonality, three term relations and uh, we we proved of our theorem and then finally i will show you a, an example about bivariate mixed function on the unit disk i start with the motivation let pn pn and qn minus 1 real polynomials symmetric real polynomials of respective degrees n and n minus 1 in this way is uh, symmetric, not symmetric. And then we define this kind of function, Wn, the sum of uh, the first polynomial plus this square root, the square root of, of one minus x squared times the other polynomial. We are working and the interval minus one, one. Uh, this uh, kind of functions satisfy the, these uh, orthogonality properties. If we multiply by means of a measure defined in minus one one, if we multiply two functions of different uh, of different parity, the product is, is zero. But if we multiply uh, this kind of function with the same parity for L equal zero and one, uh, by this uh, measure the same, but we introduce the, the factor one uh, square root of one minus x square. This uh, run as a, a standard uh, inner product. Okay, what is the origin of this kind of functions? In 2013, 
Dimitar Dimitrov, Murat Ismail, and uh, uh, Siri Ranga studied this kind of function as, as a special case of an hypergeometric function with complex parameter in the frame of the uh, so called para, para orthogonal polynomials on the unit circle. In the same year, Dimitar Dimitrov and uh, Ranga gave an interesting connection with orthogonal polynomials on the unit circle and proved the existence of n simple zeros in on the uh, interval of the orthogonality. In 2016, Cleonice Bracciali, Yoma Cave, uh, Ranga, and myself, we established a three term recurrence relation for this kind of functions. Okay, we can study. Uh, this kind of function in the same way. If we write explicitly the expression of this uh, first polynomial and the second polynomial, we have this kind of, of uh, expression. Uh, if we uh, see uh, uh, this uh, factor, the square root of one minus x squared, we can think that we are working in the uh, unit sphere, in the positive uh, range of the unit sphere, and we can think that this is y at second variable. And then if we rewrite this function, we can think this as a polynomials in two variables with an y here. Even we can substitute this relation at this uh, polynomial. In this way, univariate functions can be seen as bivariate polynomials on the positive part of the uh, unit sphere. Okay, uh, these kind of polynomials inherited uh, this inherit, sorry, this kind of uh, orthogonality properties. These uh, properties with a measure and the properties with the same parity introducing here the y. About unexpected relation between univariate orthogonal functions and bivariate polynomial was our motivation. Okay, what could we want to, to see? Wait a moment, because uh, I have a lot of, uh, of noise. What uh, small? Oh, sorry, <laughs> I'm here again. Um, we want our motivation was uh, to extend the result in the about papers in two directions. First, we want to consider moment functionals because we can uh, study a more standard class of orthogonality. In this way, we, we, we study questions about the existence of such, such types of functions. We studied uh, also of our time theorem, and the other direction was to introduce the multivariate version of the missed orthogonality. Our main objective was to give a common frame for this kind of mixed orthogonality. What is a functional system? In order to, to, to have a frame to study, I, I will talk about some brief theory. The number of variable will be g. Well, will be d uh, uh, bigger or equal than one. As usual, uh, a monomial is uh, right in this way, where alpha is a multi-index, the degree, as usual, the degree of, uh, of the monomial is given by, by the, the, L, the, L, the L norm. Uh, a multivariate polynomial of total degree in is a linear combination of, of monomials. And we define R and D, the number of different powers uh, in D variables, such that the total degree is exactly N, as, uh, as we can, uh, as, as it is well known, this, uh, uh, this uh, number is the binomial given by this number at it. If the number of variables is greater than one, this number of, of powers is bigger than one too. Okay, we will, uh, we will denote by pi n the set, the linear space of polynomials of degree less than or equal than one. And the dimension is as n the sum of the number of successive uh, monomials of a standard degree. As usual, the Euclidean norm of this uh, of uh, uh, 
a number of on RD is given by the, the usual expression. And we will work, this is very important, we will work on the unit ball. The unit ball defined as usual. Okay, we recover, now we recover the definition of uh, the vector canonical basis or the vector uh, polynomials given by Marek Kowalski in 1982. This, uh, this uh, form, this, uh, uh, this form to write the, 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 the monomials is very, very useful to study this kind of uh, spaces with uh, several variables. Uh, cano the canonical basis can we write as a sequence of vector polynomials of increasing size Rn, whose entries as all monomials of total degree n ordered by using the reverse grade reciprocal order. That is, Xn is a column vector. The set of entries of these uh, vectors is a basis of pi n. And by extension, we say that these sense form a basis. Okay, in order to uh, remember you uh, what kind of, uh, of uh, vectors I am talking about, you can see here an example, for instance, with we have two variables. I write the, bar, the, uh, the monomials in this way, and we can work with this kind of vector even when we are increasing the size of this, uh, of this uh, vector. Okay, what is the functional space that I will work? I define the, uh, these uh, two, two linear spaces, the spandex of this kind of vectors. Observe that if we have a even, even uh, uh, subindex, uh, I will have in the, in the basis x to n, uh, the less, uh, the, the the less degree is multiplied times one minus the norm of x squared. This is very important. Uh, and uh, we wrote, we, we write one with, uh, without this term and another with this term. Okay, the dimension of this space is Sn. It's uh, the same dimension as Pn. Pn. Remember that Pn is the same as set for the red factor. Uh, a function in this kind of spaces can be write in this way. This extend the first definition I put in the slides. Uh, this is a first uh, polynomial of degree n, symmetric, symmetric in all variables. Minus x is uh, the opposite of every variable. I assume the square root of one minus x squared, the norm of uh, x squared, by another uh, polynomial right, uh, symmetric. Okay, if I extend this kind of function, I will, I can, I can work with uh, vectors. If I work with vectors, I can uh, compact all of the, of my, of my, of my formulas and I can write very, very, very nice, I think. Okay, a functional system will be a sequence of vectors of increasing size. It's quite similar to the uh, canonical basis, but in this, uh, in this way, in this time, I will write the entries of the vector will be uh, functions in the way as I described before, independent, uh, one for this, another. In this, way, in this way, I can write Wn as a linear combination of the, ah, sorry, canonical basis in this way, where uh, the Gs are real matrices. In this way, I reproduce the one dimensional case to the several variables by using this kind of expression. If I expand this, we can see that the, uh, this uh, vector functional can be right as a polynomial, this uh, symmetric polynomial, because this is xn, xn minus two, minus four, and so on. And 
the other parity is n minus one, n minus three, n minus five, etc., multiplied by this uh, factor one minus x squared. Observe that it's, uh, these uh, um, terms disappear, then we are working with polynomials without problems. If the entries of the vector are independent, we say that this is a functional system and I said before. If the entries are independent, then this matrix, because this matrix is a square matrix, is invertible. And this is important. When do a system is a basis? That is, when do the entries of this kind of vectors are independent? Well, we proved this lemma that there is related the highest coefficients in the first sum with the highest coefficient in the second sum, this is the g and n and g and n minus one of a, a function, vector function with the next function. This is a square bulk matrix. We can compute the determinant and the uh, independence, the um, dependence or independence of the entries depends only of this, the product of this kind of determinants. And it is a property that, that we can, uh, that we can uh, show, we can study. Okay, what about the mixed orthogonality? Why we are here with this kind of functions? Okay, uh, we stand, as I told you before, we extend the orthogonality to moment functionals. We study a moment functional, uh, define it uh, as usual in several variables where mu alpha is a sequence of, uh, of, real, of real numbers and extended by linearity as usual. This kind of moment functional is uh, studied in the book of Dunkel and Shu, uh, several variables, and the Gwen variable is studied in several um, papers and books without problems. Moreover, we study a modification if possible. If possible, we define a modification u, one and a half, define it as the product, the u applied to the product to the square root of one minus x, the norm of x squared. When we say that a functional system is mixed orthogonal, it's mixed orthogonal if we multiply two vectors this is a column vector and this is a row vector and we can construct here a matrix. If we multiply uh, two, of, two vectors of different parity, the product is the zero matrix. If we multiply two, uh, two vectors, two functional vectors with different, with same parity but different uh, subindex, is zero, but observe that when we have the same parity, we are multiplying by u one a half. Finally, if we multiply two column vectors with the same parity and same index, we have a matrix, a square matrix, symmetric and non-singular. This is the definition of mixed orthogonal functional system. And the orthogonality is mixed because we are using a functional and the modifier of this functional. This uh, definition extend the definition introduced by Dimitr, Dimitrov, Murad Ismail, and Siri Ranga. And uh, as particular case, we recover the properties they have. Okay, if uh, H is a diagonal matrix, this is, uh, the system is said to be a mutually mixed orthogonal functional. U is called quasi-definite if we can find a mixed orthogonal function sequence is positive definite if the matrix is positive definite. Okay, if uh, moreover, if uh, WN, the, the sequence satisfy the mixed orthogonality, then the entries are orthogonal, uh, pardon, are independent, sorry. Uh, the entries are independent. Orthogonality implies independent as usual. Okay, three term relation. What about this? What we proved, Cleonis and I, we proved that uh, this kind of function satisfy one 
recurrence, one error, three time relation for every variable x, k. This property is similar to the property for uh, orthogonal polynomials in several variables, but the new, the new thing, the new apportation is that the, this uh, term, the central term is multiplying by the square root of one minus uh, the norm, the Euclidean norm uh, square in this way. Observe that when this matrix is zero, then we are working with polynomial, but with symmetric polynomials because this uh, term disappeared. And we can think this as an extension of the orthogonality to, uh, to the, uh, the symmetric orthogonality to a more general frame. This is the, uh, we can think of this. But this kind of uh, relation are not a recurrence relation. Why? Because although we can write the highest term in terms of the less degree, the matrix A and K is a rectangular matrix. It's not a square matrix. And even the rank is, uh, is fuller rank. Uh, we can't invert because uh, there exists a pseudo inverse only by the right side. And uh, if we want to eliminate here a n, we have to put at the middle the pseudo inverse, not the square pseudo inverse, and we can't obtain, uh, we can uh, deduce uh, w n plus one. But it can be proved that the rank of this uh, block matrix is the uh, highest, is uh, this is a full rank matrix. Then there exists a left inverse because uh, this is bigger than the other size, such that we can multiply. And then every every three term relation we can multiply every three term relation times the block matrix, assuming, and then we can obtain we can compute the functions. Wn plus one recursively. Observe that for uh, to compute this uh, vector, we have to use all of the variables. This is the, the mean of the sum that we are talking about. Okay, we proved a uh, forward type th theorem in this way. We can have, uh, if we have uh, several matrices of adequate size with the uh, rank properties. Uh, we work with the pseudo inverse of A and uh, we can define this kind of, of uh, relation. Then uh, this uh, functional sequence is uh, have uh, independent entries that this is very important to work and there is this the monomial functional such that uh, this uh, vector functional is a mixed orthogonal functional system. Then we can construct this kind of, uh, of functions. Okay, finally, I will show you uh, an example. Uh, it's, uh, it's a kind of generalization of uh, ball polynomials, classical ball polynomials. Remember that we can work with the classical disk polynomials. I work in the two dimensions because it is easier to see. And uh, remember that this is the weight function uh, along the, the disk, the classical weight function. This, uh, this um, moment functional defines the usual inner product on the ball. And we know an explicit expression of the ball, uh, classical ball uh, polynomials, for instance, in this way, where Cn are uh, uh, Dejenbauer or ultraspherical polynomials. This uh, basis is uh, showed in uh, the Dunkel and Shue books, book as well as in the Tom Kurwinder papers is showed this kind of basis for a classical this polynomial. What is our intention? Our intention is to substitute the second Dejenbauer polynomials, but, but uh, um, another uh, 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 functional system in one variable in the same way. Okay, 
In the paper of uh, uh, Dimitrov, Ismail, and Ranga, they work with this inner product. In this perturbation of the inner product, they perturbed the Jeyenbauer uh, weight functions by meet all of this uh, term, exponential term. When nu is equal to zero, then we recover uh, the, the usual, the usual uh, Jeyenbauer polynomials. Of, they proved that these uh, functions satisfy this uh, recurrence relation in this way. It's a recurrence relation because we are working in one variable and uh, with this explicit expression for the coefficients. Okay, when uh, these terms vanished, vanish, then we are recovered this uh, Jeyenbauer polynomials with hat is the monic Jeyenbauer polynomials. Okay, we construct these uh, functions and we showed, we showed that these functions are orthogonal with respect to this modification of the weight function. And we proved that these uh, functions are uh, mixed orthogonal with respect to the with, uh, weight function in the way, as you can see here, different parities, zero, same part, oh, sorry, same parity is, uh, like a usual orthogonality, introducing this term. Okay, we proved these uh, two, um, three terms, one for every variable where the matrix uh, were uh, explicitly computed. And uh, finally, I will show you some pictures. Well, this reference, sorry, the, or the articles here, the three article I, I showed you the book of Duncan and Shu, the, the paper of Kurt Winder, and some other references. And this is my last uh, slide. And uh, you can see here the sample I, I, I draw, these uh, graphs, uh, and compute explicitly the, the functions in the in four degree two. And the, the first function is a polynomial of degree two in two variables. The second is a, a, a polynomial but it's perturbed by the square root of one minus x minus c square, and you can see here, and the other is in the same way. Observe that this kind of border, because this is like uh, uh, under, I don't, I don't know in English, but this is the, the influence of the term in uh, the square root. And then, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, some questions, please. No questions. Uh, thank Teresa again. Okay. <laughs>